substance use disorder has taken the lives of more Americans than anything else. It exceeds car accidents, it exceeds other long-term illnesses. Between November 2019 and November 2020, we lost 92,000 people to drug overdose in the United States. No state didn't see an increase. Ohio ends up ranking 31st in the amount of percentage increase year over year for overdose. It breaks my heart to see someone trapped. It breaks my heart to see someone think that there's no way out. I want to be able to help these men and women that are coming here to not have to go 40 some years of struggling. The very people that our society has kind of written off are people that have huge gifts. The more I see it, the more I see what God's wanting to do is generational. He's wanting to change the whole tide of what we got going on in this world right now. The Emerge Recovery and Trade Initiative is basically a venue through which we've identified two segments of the population that we feel are virtually underserved. Uh, the first segment of the population that we feel are underserved are men and women in recovery. The first thing that we're gonna do here is we're gonna have a men's recovery program and a women's recovery program. After your first 30 days or 60 days, um, a lot of people have nowhere to go. They usually are back out on the streets and back to the same cycle that they started. What Emerge is gonna provide is place to stay, place to heal, but also within that, giving you a skill set. So whether it be a plumber, whether it be a heating and air, an electrician, a, a cook, um, a secretary, a call center, it's gonna give you that other element of hope to when you are done in a year or two years that you can actually go out and use those skills to regain what you've lost, to regain your house, to regain your family, to regain your life back. There's nothing like it in the country. There's nothing that compares to it in terms of its comprehensive service opportunity to where someone could walk onto this campus in active addiction and get completely cared for through their addiction into the possibility of being trained in a trade and an opportunity for long-term employment either with the partners that are here or being certified in a, in a way that would make them attractive to someone else. It's an extension of what we've been doing in our businesses in mentoring and supporting people. This is just a, doing this on a grander scale. As a business, we're never able to provide all the help that certain segments of the population need. We do the best we can, but this is being able to do it on a grander scale. There's lots of available programs for people, and the reason why there's so many programs for people right now in recovery is because there's a lot of money following people uh, that go through recovery programs. What there's not, there's not a lot of money that once they complete the program, what do they do after that? So the transitional part of what we do here, we feel is a very important part, and we feel like it's a bridge that needs to be gapped in this formula of recovery. This is where they'll be able to go and learn the classroom part of it in the morning, and then in the afternoon be able to actually go out into the field and apply what they've learned in the classroom. We've got 240,000 square foot, and we've deemed a certain part of this property to be exclusively for businesses that want to be a part of this initiative. Now, the way that works is, in order for a business to be able to reside here, they've got to be willing to allow the populations that we're serving here to do internships and apprenticeships. Emerge Recovery and Trades Initiative is huge. When Doug Van Dyke approached me about potentially partnering with them and what they're doing here, um, the vision for this place was just so in line with what it is that we're doing as a ministry that I was totally attracted to what was going on here because um, Emerge Recovery and Trades Initiative is all about coming alongside of the person in recovery through helping them through peer support, through mentoring, through coaching, through clinical support, through tons and tons of job opportunity which is hugely needed in the world of recovery and what his hope can bring to that is a christ-centered residential recovery program that has been successful throughout the last 60 years so so we're just really excited for the opportunity that a merge recovery and trades initiative will give to the men that are a part of our ministry Hope Hub is a long-term women's recovery treatment center. We can take somebody from after they've been detoxed till 14 months later, they've gone through job training, maybe gotten a GED if they've needed it. 
medical attention, gone through serious recovery program, and then we can plug them into sober living even after that. It's been my experience that after you've gotten sober, you hit this now what, how do I relive life? That's the space and the environment that I want to create here, an environment where women can relearn life, learn how to make healthy choices, get their GED or their diploma, learn a new job, a new skill set, fully equip them and prepare them to go back into the world to be, you know, mothers, sisters, daughters, entrepreneurs, businesswomen. So I've got so many friends, even myself, before we get locked up, go to treatment, back on the street. It's just a cycle that repeats and repeats and repeats. There's no change for us. What they're trying to accomplish and what I believe they will with this Emerge Center is, is we, we go through, it's the treatment, it's housing for us when we're done, it's trades, they teach us trades, they get us certified in everything we need. So when we're done with this, when we actually complete this whole program and we go through all of this, we don't have to go back to the same streets that we used to live on. We've now got a new career, we've got an education, we've got what certifications, whatever we need to continue to progress in our life. Prior to two and a half years ago, I knew nothing of sober living, I knew nothing of treat, none of these treatment centers, anything. And I mean, I wasted a lot of my life on drugs. Had I met Kip or a place like this years ago, the impact it could have had on my life would have been, it would have been so different. My family's lives, it could have changed. A lot of my friends might still be alive. I can't go back and change anything of what I did. The, the Emerge Center wasn't there. I can't wait to see what it's gonna do for future generations. The second segment of the population that we've deemed underserved that we want to serve here is young men and eventually young women who are emancipating out of foster care. So the way that would work is they'll actually live here as well. And the reality is, is in this day and age when um, if somebody's in foster care and they turn 18, a lot of times they have a lot of benefits that are available to them, but because they don't have the life skills or adult relationships um, needed to uh, be able to take advantage of those different benefits that are available to them, a lot of times they kind of mess up and lose those benefits. And once those benefits are lost, it's hard to regain those benefits. So what we're hoping to do here is provide a place where number one, they can reside. Number two, while they're here, they can learn the life skills they need to be productive members of society, how to handle a bank account, how to cook, how to do laundry. These are skills that a lot of them haven't learned. When I first heard about the Emerge program, I was very interested because there is no such program anywhere. Oftentimes in the foster care system, foster youth are told where to live, what school to go to. They don't have a voice or a choice in what happens in their lives. At Emerge, they will have that opportunity to come and do an orientation in the program, see where they would be living, make the choice of whether they want to participate, and have a choice in their educational program. This program offers a young person an opportunity to have schooling as well as on-the-job training so that when they complete their program, they have the experience and the education to go out into the work world and be, you know, tax-paying citizens. It's, it's you're giving to them and they're giving back to the community. Probably the most important thing that we're gonna to try to do here across the board is establish a culture of mentorship and discipleship where we actually you know, connect the men and women that are here with people that can mentor them and kind of come along beside them in life. A lot, I think that's a lot of what's missing in our society now. Uh, when we're brought up, especially in the foster care system or in the street or you know, through the prisons, uh, we're set up against each other out here, really, you know, as in you know, who's got the most money, who's got this, who's got, you know, we're always set. And the real relationship that the church needs to bring here is that we're set up for relationships here and love. And we need to, if you're like me, I had to realize real quick that I didn't really know how to maintain a relationship with a friend. Anybody can get a job, anybody can do this, but how do you keep it? What I, I, I plan to do here is just be a walking testimony, number one, to show that it's possible for somebody to go from you know, all that bad and abandonment to being okay and that there are good people still out here. Gabe Armati said that addiction is a person's desperate attempt to solve a problem. There's pain there. And so often in that pain, in that trauma, someone might get introduced to a substance that temporarily relieves that pain. 
And so when we look at the problem, the problem is our society is becoming more and more disconnected. And when you look at things like addiction and suicide, they are both byproducts of isolation. And so one of the things that, that Emerge will help to resolve is to create a healthy, thriving community of people where folks who are dealing with substance use disorder, dealing with things like depression, thoughts of suicide, they can come into and find a campus and an ecosystem who will love them where they are, but begin to provide that needed connection that they're so desperately seeking. Most of us, especially those that are going through recovery, have always had their focus on themselves. And uh, here, we're gonna take that focus and put it on Christ and help understand what Christ is going to do for us. I bought into the lies, and for the longest time, it, it took me a while to break free of that. But it wasn't until I knew my identity in Christ that really set me free. We're wading into it with evidence-based practice. We're, we're partnering with some of the best practices that have been employed locally, statewide, and the nation in order to help people that have substance use disorder issues. But we're also bringing to bear the why, how are we solving that why with the why that has been solved for thousands of years and that why has been helped by Jesus Christ. I'm a second chance employer because I understand the grace God has shown me. I make mistakes all the time and he doesn't hold them against me. So therefore, I want to be one of the most gracious people in the world of giving other people second chances. So I think if you had to just briefly state the purpose of what we're doing here, you can go to the words of Jesus. We are commanded in the Bible to make disciples of all nations. So the culture that we're going to create here is a culture of mentorship and discipleship. Not just the disciple people, but the disciple people on how to disciple people. And I think that if you looked at just one overall purpose in a nutshell, that would be it, just to make disciples here. You know, God is involved, His hand is involved, He's, he's placing on people's hearts what He wants done, what He wants to accomplish. And it's really, really exciting to be part of. When they walk out of here, they're just walking out of a building. They're not walking out of relationships. Those relationships are still intact when somebody leaves here because we're going to offer them services and relationship once they leave too. What you guys see now is just empty classrooms. We see as dorms and beds and kitchens and dining rooms and living rooms, just an opportunity for so many lives to be changed. I think the main thing um, that we're looking for at this point is people to come along beside us in prayer. If we don't bathe this in prayer, we don't stand a chance. Well, we're also going to need um, teachers. We're, we're also going to need mentors. We're going to need material to build out out there. We're going to need, of course, donations. Of course, um, I mean, that's what it's going to take. But the biggest aspect I see right now is just prayer. It's just, this is going to work. God's going to make it work, and there's nothing that I'm going to do to stop it or anybody else is going to do to stop it. We are here not to make bad people good. We are here to make sick people well. This Emerge Center, I mean, it's just, it's gonna give people the opportunity. It's gonna give us that second chance that, that nobody else will.